these days in technology, one of the big action areas is in, in the domestic environment. But people often take it as a place where technology should kind of act as a servant to people. It should be intelligent, monitor what people are doing and what's happening around the home, and then do things for people. We're, we're skeptical of that agenda, both technically, because we think it's very hard or impossible to do, and also ethically and morally, because we think it's wrong to automate all those, those kind of activities. We're, we're more interested in building resources through technology that provide information and possibilities to people that they can appropriate and interpret themselves to find their own meanings in their own activities in life. And that's what all these pieces reflect in one way or another. Well, basically what we wanted to do was build something that would allow people to look out of their home and understand where their, where their home is, where they're living a little better. The plane sends out a transponder signal. The air, it's picked up by the aerial, and then that's decoded. We have some, um, a device and software that decodes the signal, picks up the flight number and identity of the aircraft, and then we have a database that we've built up that maps that to orig originating and um, destination airports and then we map those to actual longitude latitude points and then send that to Google, uh, Google Earth um, which takes care of flying us from point to point. We contacted the NASA engineers because we saw an article about their work in the popular press actually and it, they'd been using genetic algorithms to design very small aerials for spacecraft and we thought that it was an interesting technique and also that the results were aesthetically quite beautiful so we wrote them an email and asked if they'd like to help us with the project and kind of to our amazement and surprise and delight they said yes um, and so we told them about what we needed and they came they did you know they ran their genetic algorithms and came back with a couple of designs for us we gave the plane tracker to some people who live in Isleworth which is on the um, approach path to Heathrow Airport and asked them to live with it for about a month. You see that, that bay with yeah, we didn't, It's a conversation piece, there's no denying that. I mean, it does create an awareness of um, the amount of travel that takes place and the amount of journeys that are happening very close to us. And sometimes, you know, I look up wistfully and wish I was on one of these planes going somewhere or, or, or having been somewhere. I think it's a mixture of two things. It's a mixture of you know, exploring the earth, a mixture of technology and, and how we react to that. The local barometer is, is using a different sort of information, much more local information and also largely text-based information to give you a feel for the kinds of people and the kind of concerns that surround your, your your actual physical home in various locations. There's a weather station outside the home and we use that to look at wind speed and, wi and wind direction. And then we have a system that, with a database that can tell us what postcodes are upwind from the home. And, so, and then we look out from the home according to the wind speed. So if the wind's blowing really strong, we'll get postcodes that are quite far away. And if it's quieter, they'll all be very close to the home. Then we use those postcodes as terms to search for on um, websites that contain localized information. And the, in the particular insta instantiation we've built, we're looking at the loot, web, loot website, which is all classified ads, because most of those have location information. There's a large number of classified ads. They, almost all of them have postcodes. And they all sort of give strange glimpses into the home, into the kinds of things that people own, the things they want, the things they don't want. The thing is, too, that because they're dependent on wind direction, as uh, the guy we lent it to um, pointed out, you know, the areas, particularly in London, which is really dense and has lots of different kinds of areas, you, you start to pick up on characteristic things being for sale or kinds of, kinds of interiors or cars or whatever from different areas. So he claimed, anyway, he could start to spot when something was from, you know, the posh area up the road versus the more working class district. And that was part of the intention, is to, again, to give you a feel for where you are and what's around you.